Hey friends. Hope you like those videos of the Columbia High School SWAT team going out there and showing off all their fancy bombs and bullets. I can't help but wonder what that's all about. It's kind of weird. But anyway, maybe there's a good reason. Yeah. Anyway, um, I just got off the phone an interesting phone call tonight um, from a lady that I just met on the phone. Uh, she was very willing to be able to share some information that she had with me um, regarding uh, police abuse. Now, granted, this is only one, you know, this is a conversation between two people who don't know the reality of the situation. But the more people I talk to, this is becoming more common than the exception. And it, um, it should, we should be fearful of this. In this particular situation, um, she had, her, she had mentioned to me that her husband actually was arrested for telling a cop that he was a dumb. Yeah, so you can get arrested now for that. Cost him several thousand dollars. Um, there's also an issue related to uh, just regular rights violations. The fact that more and more people are believing that law enforcement now has become God. They have become uh, immune uh, to anything uh, that would, you know, that would um, make them look bad. They can simply just find a way to bury it. Um, and therefore there's no real justice left for the people. I've told you many times that, you know, me and some friends had studied law and we've learned about the corruption, we've learned about the unlawful nature of the expansion of authority, uh, the complete dissolution and, uh, of the checks and balances and separations of power. Uh, they're meeting to be able to create policy uh, to throw in uh, a multitude of different things, behavioral, health, you know, the expansion of judiciary powers, the judges being able to determine uh, behavior, the behavioral stability of a particular person in question. All of these things are incredibly dangerous because once the government has the ability to be able to determine who's healthy and who's not, they can actually use those against the people. Uh, you know, if I happen to be in along the lines of the fact that uh, the more people I meet in government, especially in law enforcement, the more common the phrase perception is reality becomes. So if I become, if I'm perceived by somebody to be a terrorist or, you know, somebody, I, you know, I happen to be irate and to somebody they might think that I might be psychotic, you know, whether I am or not, I'm not, but uh, somebody can perceive it that way. So that must mean that somehow I'm psychotic. Well, nobody, in, we don't understand what this means. You know, our government is hell bent on expanding its authority. It's got to build more jails. We've got the highest incarceration rate in the globe, from what I understand. You know, they continue to be able to expand their powers. They've completely militarized and they're becoming federalized, and they don't realize that that really this is going to come at a complete abolition of local jurisdictions. There's so much at play here. It's just, it, it, it boggles the mind. And the war on drugs has, has been another thing. You know, if now if you have a drug addict that steals from your home, let's see if I can say this right, if I remember right, and she agrees to become an informant to be able to tell, you know, to tell on other dopers, uh, somehow she becomes immune. And anything that she would have done to you uh, is somehow forgiven. Uh, this is happening over and over and over again. The war on drugs has become the main focus of law enforcement in addition to petty violations, uh, which is really a federal program. And so they don't even question the idea that they're, it's a federalized program. They don't under, I don't think that many of them see the abuse of power, how it undermines the liberty of, of the citizens that they serve. Uh, this is going to be incredibly dangerous. You know, when I go and I talk to police officers and everything, 
they say the number one complaint they have is the um, is the fact that people don't respect them anymore. Well, I, I I understand that, and that's those instances are sad. But what if the same complaint came from the citizen and the fact that we no longer trust our government and law enforcement? to most law-abiding citizens happens to be the face of government and the first interaction that they have with government. Then the animosity that's there between law enforcement, the growing animosity, I might add, between the citizens and the people um, becomes, it grows and it festers to the point where when that initial contact is made, it's explosive. And where can that go? So part of the thing that I'm trying to do when I communicate with law enforcement officers or government officials or whatever is to be able to say, look, let's, let's try to find the root cause of the issue and not focus on the byproduct or the consequences of an issue that, you know, on the root that we haven't been focusing on. I mean, the idea that Ferguson is happening is happening for a reason. There are several reasons. One of them, it was created by design. It's got the federal. It's got the. It's got the Obama administration written all over it, as far as race baiting and. But the bigger picture is, the um, the fact that the Global Patriot Act, I I believe I read somewhere, had been signed while we were busy focusing on Ebola or something. You know, this has been given carte blanche for the United Nations to be able to step in, control our federal government, to control our local jurisdictions, to be able to increase the militarization of our people, and to enslave our nation, ultimately controlling all of us, whether you're a cop or you're a citizen. So it was really sad. The lady asked me if I knew anybody that could help her, and I, I didn't even know what to say. She says she's never going to be able to see her grandkids again. And this, these stories are happening all too frequently. And I love my law enforcement, man. As long as, they're, as long as they're acting the way they're supposed to, they should love me as long as I act like I'm supposed to, but we need to understand how each other's supposed to act. How can a citizen act? Is a citizen supposed to lawfully have the ability to be able to challenge law enforcement or any government agency? Sure, in a constitutional republic. And if we're not, what form of government are we? Can they enforce the law? Absolutely. If crimes are being committed. Then again, how do we define a crime? Oh, that's right. The government has the authority to redefine our English language to be able to determine what a crime is. Like doing donuts in a parking lot on a snowy day. We're in trouble, you guys. Our country's spinning out of control. Governments throughout history have always, if, they have, if enemies have not been present, they've created them. And then they've come in like the, in the white stallion, looking like the savior. We're in, we're in an incredibly difficult situation. And I'm just trying to do what I can to prevent it whatever good that is anyway those were just a couple thoughts um, stay active go after it respectfully challenge everything love you guys talk to you later bye